Well, we're here again. Another day of my uh, financially burdensome project here. We've taken everything off. I mean, we're just going whole hog the whole way, you know? It's kind of like, where do you draw the line? You know what I mean? Do some paint work to like, you know, tear the floor up. I mean, what? where do you draw the line at? I don't know. But we got everything off. We're doing the motor box. Screw it, you know? Got the whole floor up. May as well. Take a look. Tell you, this boat does look a heck of a lot simpler with everything off of it. We even took the paint off of it. Got the hatches out the bottom. Got to pull them up. Trying to get the floor ready to sand down. The old 3208 Caterpillar. Classic. Classic Waterman engine. We love these things because they're just big pushrod V8s. Any dummy can fix them. Myself included. We did actually take this window off and, you know, we took the door off. Just... Why not? Let me know if this is just a me thing or uh, do you guys take a screw? And I want to make sure I don't lose this screw. And I know right now that it's from that hatch. And it's so important and so right in my mind that I can't even conceive a way that I would forget this short one inch flathead screw could possibly go to anything but that hatch. I just took it out. I'm going to take it, walk it up here. I'm gonna set it in this pile on the dash with all the other ones. How could I forget that this particular pile of screws goes to that particular hatch? Well, I also have these and these, and to be honest, I forgot what these even go to. But yesterday, when I put this little pile of screws here, I was so convinced that I would not forget what this pile of screws goes to. I would think there is no way that I could forget such a specific screw and why there were so many. And if I put them in this pile, I'll know surely what they go to. And these, I don't know. Yet I'm doing it again. Again. It just doesn't make sense to me. I, why am I like this? I don't understand. I should go get a bag and a Sharpie. But of course, I'm trying to think, oh, I don't have any sandwich bags and I can't think of anything I could rob a sandwich bag out of what am I going to drive all the way back to the house just to go get a sandwich bag and I'm trying to think I think all I have is these big gallon bags and I'm going to have waste a whole bunch of big gallon bags with little bits of screws in them and then I can't even think of where I have a sharpie maybe at the house I'd probably go get one get all the way back here and it wouldn't work and then I couldn't find a ballpoint pen and then I just poke holes in the bags anyway so I just set them on the dash I'm going to forget I already forgot the ones from yesterday that's just sort of how my life goes, I guess. Critter of habit. We're going to start sanding all this floor down. I got some holes in the floor from crab pots. I got to patch that all up. Shoot, maybe we'll even give the motor a little spit shine. Who knows? It's pretty cool, though, that I'm going to spend all this time making the floor and the top side look really nice. And you can still see uh, daylight through a hole in my roof. Oh, it does start to look a heck of a lot bigger though with all all of my crap off of it all of this room it's like a whole new boat now i've always been a firm believer that uh if i'm gonna exert physical energy i really ought to get paid for it so i've never been a big gym guy but i will admit that if i get up really early and i go to the gym with Lindsay every morning and do something active before I have to come to work and whatever. I do feel a lot better, especially mentally, no doubt. So I haven't spent a lot of time in gyms here in my days. Uh, I've actually spent a lot more time making fun of people that go to gyms. But I went to the gym with Lindsay this morning. And it's got to be the funniest thing in the world to watch. Because here I am... And I have no idea how any of this machinery works. And I have no clue how to work out. There's like, I get like, you know, you're supposed to lift things and you're supposed to pull on stuff and walk on a treadmill. But like, I don't know, I don't have a routine. I don't know how it works. I don't know what you're supposed to do or how many. And I could tell, I was getting the eyes, you know, from people that are kind of like, you know, even at Planet Fitness. Planet Fitness is the land of people that, you know, they're not the most hardcore. It's not like a bodybuilding gym. You know what I'm saying? No hate at all, Planet Fitness. Or people that go to the gym. I'm just saying. I was even getting the eye there. People were like, has this guy never been to a gym? 
and I really haven't maybe probably less than 10 times in my whole life have I been to a gym and <laughs> so I'm walking around looking like an idiot trying to like watch what other people are doing without being that guy that kind of like is watching people at the gym because I'm like man I wouldn't want somebody to watch me at the gym yet I'm watching these other people at the gym thinking wow I hope nobody's watching me at the gym but I'm just trying to figure out how this stuff works. Lindsay's trying to help me and she's got this whole routine down, but even she's starting to get a little embarrassed for me, I think. <laughs> I was thinking, man, this is really, this is like one of those movies where like a, like a caveman gets frozen in ice and then gets like thawed out and you know, somebody from the modern world is trying to like show them all these things that like are just normal to everybody else. And like, he's very confused as to how basic things work and why you do them. I was like, <laughs> that checks out. I pretty much look like some sort of caveman or something. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like, I don't know how this stuff works. I'm like sitting backwards on machines or like lifting weights in ways that will just harm, harm me. <laughs> I said, man, this is, this is pretty funny. And uh, God bless Lindsay for, uh, you know, not just leaving me there to uh, flounder in my own humility, which I don't know. She probably should have because uh, people, I could tell people were, people were starting to get embarrassed for me. It's just like one of those things. It's like everybody there knows. And I'm like, how does everybody here know? It's like even like old people and stuff. Like they're all out there. They have a routine. They're doing their thing. They hop on this machine, just start going. Perfect, impeccable form. And I'm like, you're like 86. And I'm like 26. And I have no idea. I've never seen a machine like this in my life. I'm like, it just does seem like a foreign concept to me. I'm like, so you're telling me you build a machine to do nothing but exert energy into this machine and get enough like you're not it's not generating power it's not like accomplishing a task it's not making your life easier you're just like it, putting burning calories into this machine putting wear and tear on yourself so this machine can just waste energy it doesn't doesn't really make a lot of sense i think a good idea would be a gym where all the equipment generates power to offset the electric bill or whatever of that gym. There's an idea there. Maybe I am a caveman that got frozen in permafrost and defrosted. Who knows? And I will admit I did screw up in the cabin because like I said, we didn't plan on doing any of this. Uh, everything's gonna be covered in fiberglass dust in here for the rest of eternity. And the funny thing is we're gonna be so sick and tired of working on paint and glass work by the time we're done the outside that the inside's probably never going to get done until another year. There's going to be crappy paintings inside. We're going to be working in the Taj Mahal outside and come inside a cabin and it just looks like the slums. All this wiring, that's just industry standard stuff. You know what I mean? You don't want to uh, trim your zip ties. You want to leave them here so that when guys walk by, they know that they're getting too close to so they get, you know, they're touching the zip ties. That's the, that's the no-no zone there. Yeah, pretty much almost done did uh from there to here i only have the rest of the entire freaking boat to do say whatever you want i'm not very good at fiberglass never claimed to be but i'm just good enough to get it back together it's a crab boat it ain't no freaking sailboat yacht hoity-toity this and that like we're getting things done on this boat this is a working vessel it doesn't need to look that nice it just needs to function I just don't want the paint to fall off. I can't believe how much time it takes just to sand stuff. It's pretty crazy. And then you're waiting on resin to dry and whatever else. I got to pull these cleats out. Of course, I got halfway through that and then got distracted by something else and totally forgot I was even doing that. But let's check this thing out. My cylinder, steering cylinder, she's in right shape there. I just replaced that two years ago. That's pretty good. I think she's still got another year in her. She'll hold up. Part of the thing you got to understand about work boats is that they're built out of just things laying around. So that is a log splitter cylinder that I got at Tractor Supply. And they're like 85 bucks and they rust out, they bust, we break them, whatever. And I don't have to go order some crazy $1,000 marine part that takes two weeks to get here. 
Because when you're crabbing, you only have so many days to catch all your crabs the whole year. So if it breaks, I can go there that night and replace it. Should be getting the paint from Total Boat delivered today. And I know there's sand or noise in the background, but this is a place of work, all right? Not a film studio. We're getting things done around here, so just deal with it. Also, look at these things that showed up. What are these? I love this place because you just never know what's going to just show up. So, you know, you just come in one day and there's random, pretty cool stuff here. Everybody here has kind of eclectic taste and weird things. They got little jet ski engines in them and stuff. You drive them with this little joystick, like some kind of Top Gun, Tom Cruise, Happy Meal version of a fighter jet. It's pretty neat though. It's just got all these little armatures and things that I guess move the jet drive. This one looks in rough shape, but never fear. There's two of them. Oh yes. This one appears to have a pond in the bottom. Of it. At least the motor's in one piece. There might be some fish swimming around in the bilge. I'm not so sure does appear somebody's been in here working on it but uh tools are a little damp i wouldn't worry about that pretty neat though i'm sure that out of two of these one of these has the potential to actually run again just looks like a little kawasaki two-stroke two-cylinder jet ski engine probably out of the little jet skis i don't remember how many horsepower these are maybe like 40 or something like that but this little thing would rip with 40. Think about if you put a 40 horsepower outboard on an eight foot boat, it would fly. And usually, oh yeah, there we go. Mixing gas hauling ass there, two stroking. Look at this. What is all this wire? Is that homemade or is that factory? That seems like a super overcomplicated system to like vent your gas cap, but whatever. I think these things kind of follow the go-kart principle where you don't need to go quite as fast on the top end to feel like you're going really fast. You just make the vessel that you're going faster in uh, smaller and more dangerous. So it feels like you're going twice as fast like go-karts. You're so low to the ground. They're like five horsepower and they only do like 20 miles an hour. But you feel like you're doing 50 because you could die at any moment. I feel like this is the same kind of concept just on the water and I'm totally about it. My very favorite part is these little, like, Jetsons, like, windshield things. I imagine this is probably more of a splash guard than it is a real windshield. But somebody has put some time into reattaching this windshield. I mean, there's like 50 bucks in stainless hardware plus all these little aluminum tabs and they even put little rubber spacers like grommets in there. Somebody's got some hours into this thing already. Yeah, look, see, this is the seat. This sits on top of the engine, so you sit over top. And I guess you drive and do throttle with this. I think this one's to launch missiles and this one's to uh, eject the seat or something. And then here's your forward and reverse lever. That's gotta be tricky though, to do forward and reverse on the side and then steer and fire missiles and do throttle with the stick. Now that I'm like looking around this place, there's a lot of cool things that are really odd, but it's normal to me, but to like your average guy, they come here and they're like, what is that? Like that thing, it's a Soviet era forklift. Anyway, like, subscribe, leave me a comment, whatever. Tell me what I should be doing, what I shouldn't be doing. I probably won't listen, but you never know. Let me know what you think, and uh, let me know what kind of projects you guys are working on. Leave something in the comments. I'm curious. I'm curious. Am I the only guy that works this way? Does your brain work like this, too? I don't know. Subscribe, and we'll get more. And We got plenty of cool stuff going on, actually. Like My life's super crazy and busy right now between a million different things. So stay tuned.